Okay, so uh, welcome. I regret uh, starting a little bit late, but hopefully it gave uh, teams a little bit of time to meet extra. Uh, today we're going to be continuing our discussion of path-based coverage for testing. Um, and you'll recall the notion here is, is a fairly simple one. Um, both in its uh, in its sort of general form and in its specific form. So, in its general form, we have limited resources to test it. There's no way we can exhaustively test the system, or even typically uh, a single algorithm within used within it. Uh, and so, you know, the time that we're putting into testing, we have to put it in total. And broadly, we've been talking about ways of doing that intelligently, uh, equivalence classes, boundary value testing, um, and coverage testing uh, falls in there as a type of technique that will let you judiciously choose um, what to test in a program. So at least your efforts go for a reasonable, a, a set of possibilities that are reasonably likely to show errors. If you put all your efforts into the same equivalence class, you know, it's going to be really diminishing returns after the first couple of ones because you're going to be trying out the same logical functionality again and again and again. Uh, and coverage procedures kind of follow that thought of dividing up your efforts among different types of um, things that might go wrong by covering different areas of your program. Um, there might be a bug in one node of your program or another node, another state of your program, another transition in your program, the logic. And by achieving coverage, you at least know you covered all the states or nodes, right? Um, whether they are screens of your program or basic blocks. If you haven't reached them in your tests, you're unlikely to have found any problem that's there. So even if a problem were there, you're unlikely to find it, right? So the idea of coverage is a certain notion of thoroughness, just like you might explore all equivalence classes or an orthogonal array that will achieve all possible pairs of possibilities among a set of among a set of fields in a form. You know, coverage allows you to achieve a certain thoroughness. And if you haven't achieved that thoroughness, it's kind of hard to argue and pass the red base test that you, you know, you've reasonably tested this program because you didn't even test the whole screen of it, or you didn't even test this possibility, right? Um, and we saw in in our past few lectures that these ideas could be applied at the code level, at the system level, and uh, they could be applied. Um, uh, sort of at a at a black box level in terms of broad functionality. Um, uh, I'm looking for that one with the ATM, but I, I won't go back any further. Um, so this is the general idea of what we're trying to explore. We've already seen two levels of testing within the subsumption hierarchy. We saw node coverage and edge coverage. What does it mean? With the subsumption hierarchy, what does it mean that one thing points to another? Can anyone tell me? When we say one thing subsumes another, here, that edge coverage subsumes node coverage, what do I mean? I gave you a, 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 a notion of this last time. Yes, yeah, Jonathan? Uh, basically, the edge, co edge coverage covers all the test cases of, the, of testing things from the node coverage. That, that's right. So it's stronger than node coverage. Um, and so if we achieve edge cover, we automatically achieve node coverage. Um, typically here, we've achieved more than this. We more than node coverage. We've covered some additional things as well. And we saw that within our last lecture, right? We saw that uh, if we were going on all transitions here, um, exploring all transitions, it's stronger than just reaching once to every every block. Um, we we're reaching it through different through different approaches. 
or if we were testing something like this, test uh, going once to each state of the system is a lot weaker than going with each possible transition. Because going with a single into the state once, like cancel my customer. Look, to achieve that, we may just cancel a, a flight reservation that hasn't even been paid for. And there's two possibilities here, which we never explored, which are really important possibilities in terms of wanting the system to operate correctly, right? A case where we paid and we want to cancel the refund. It's pretty important if you tested that way. And state coverage didn't achieve that. Um, but edge coverage did. And the same thing with some of these other things. So when we say in that subsumption hierarchy here, uh, here, that you know, edge coverage is stronger than node coverage because it provides us extra guarantees beyond what node coverage, right? And what we're going to be exploring now is higher levels yet. I'm going to offer a very brief comment on edge care coverage, but really our goal today is to go through prime health coverage, which is a very high level of coverage guaranteed. It's not exhaustive. We're not covering all possible paths, but generally that's not going to be possible. We'll, we'll talk about why that is. Prime path coverage is an excellent level of, of coverage. Um, Okay, so uh, we saw, you know, state versus transition coverage. Um, there's quite a difference, but with transition coverage, there remain some important testing gaps. Um, for example, with test coverage, uh, excuse me, with edge coverage, we need to explore each possibility, right? Where this if statement is true, and one where it's false, for example one where this if statement is true, one where it's false. We want to explore all possibilities. But we haven't considered in that regard combinations of this condition. Say when you come in via a certain path, you did, you know, foo was true and var was, was true. Who was true and var was false. Who is true, who is false and var is true, who is false and, and var is false. We haven't considered all possibilities um, there. We, we may just consider each one separately, and we haven't been guaranteed to consider all those, those pairs, even in an orthogonal array basis. And that's just an indication. I'm not saying it's, it's necessarily a cause of grand issues, but it can be. You know, it could be that this block of code in bar you know, where this is true when you execute it, works if foo is also uh, true, but it doesn't work if foo is not true, because something wasn't initialized. And that is possible, but we're not guaranteed to test that. So edge coverage, it's good, but there's some basic things that's leaping on the, on, on the table. Um, so uh, I'd like to explore this some more, or by, by talking about prime path coverage. Okay. Um, and prime path coverage also provides us this opportunity to, to test out more of this general strategy or scheme that we've talked about for achieving coverage that applies to no coverage, edge coverage, edge pair, prime path. This general kind of rubric we'll go through. And it's these three steps. So the thing so I think I told you. Basically, always on the exam. Always on the exam. Um, what are the three, three key steps in covering the procedure? Well, the first is them is we identify the set of things we need to cover. We identify the nodes, so the states of the system, um, for example, in this first step. And then we develop a set of abstract paths, scenarios that go from start to finish. I want to emphasize that. Second step here, not room to put it, but start to finish paths. That's what I mean by path. Okay, goes kind of, you can imagine starting at the top of the function, going to the bottom of the function, or from the login point to the point where they're logged out. Right? Start to finish. 
And then once you identify these scenarios that will cover the things you want to cover, like states of the system, say screens of the at risk youth app or pages in a web app, um, then you develop a set of concrete test cases that are going to realize these abstract scenarios. And we're going to see all three of these steps. We need to, these abstract scenarios are kind of at a high level of what we're testing. And then we need to come up with something that will get it to go through these, that will achieve this. They'll enter the, something very particular at this entry, at that entry, and that entry, such that this scenario is, is realized. It, it comes about. We go click through it and enter information, and we're very particular about this. At this level, it's got to be totally reproducible. You can give it to a tester and say, go test, you know, this series of steps, you know, type it in. And if there's a problem, it's it's essentially assured that if someone else goes and goes through those same steps, it will they'll see the same thing. There's some limits to that. It can be dependencies on external circumstances, but by and large, it's true. Okay, so I just want to remind you, we're gonna be going through the same reason. In this case. It's a little bit more subtle because what we're covering here are not states. They are not transitions. They are paths. What we are covering is paths here. And when, when it comes to recent abstract scenarios, you don't get kind of confused because, wait a minute, we have paths here, and somehow we're coming up with paths here, and these paths have to go from start to finish, and somehow those don't. I'm going to try to walk you through this, because this could be the optimal example, and I want you to know how to find, find paths. Okay. Right. And I don't want to get confused about these steps. So first, we're going to find the things that we're going to cover, and they are going to be paths. These certain paths that have some nice properties. They're called what are called simple paths, but they're kind of maximum lengths of kind of the basic building blocks. Okay. And um, that's why they're called prom paths. They're kind of the basic building blocks, just like a number is made out of prom, prom elements you multiply together. Um, and and then we're going to develop a set of abstract scenarios that will cover them, that go from start to finish. And then we're going to come up with some concrete test cases. Uh, we may not get to that, that step in detail, but um, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit. Okay, so prime paths. In order to introduce prime paths, um, ensure a degree, motivate them, I need to introduce an even more foundational which is a notion of a simple path. Okay. Um, so we're going to define a simple path. And, and then we're going to define a prime path. All prime paths are simple paths. Okay. Simple paths are a broader set. And prime paths are sort of a subset within. Okay? They're within simple paths. They're simple paths that are, in some sense, maximal length and still be the simple path. They're kind of the, the biggest we can have and not violate the rules of simple paths. So they're kind of an interesting subset, interesting building blocks of, of simple paths. So, what's a simple path? A simple path is something we define in the context of a graph. Okay, so we have edges and nodes in this graph, or vertices and edges. Okay, um, so we might have, have something uh, something like like this, and we might have uh, a graph that basically goes through. Through this in, in some sort of uh, some sort of way, so uh, we have 
and F in the middle, and maybe B goes to F, and it could go to B as well. Um, and I'll introduce some cycles because in general there will be there will be cycles here. Okay. Um, and a simple path is going to be some path through the system. We're going to to uh, in general have a sense of what's the start node in a terminal node. Let's say E is the start node, or A is the start node, and E is the terminal node. Face this guy a little bit towards the board here. I don't know if that will help much, but um, maybe this is is the, the start node and this is the exit node here. Kind of put double arrows there. And we're looking for paths through this graph that go from node to node to node. Okay. So one possible path, and I'm not necessarily this looking for ones to go from start to finish, but will be like A, B would be a path, right? Legitimate path. A, B, C is another path, okay? But in general, I'm looking for something that need not start at the, at, the, at the start. So for example, C, E is a path here, or C, D is a path, uh, C, D, E is a path, et cetera. Those are paths, they consist of strings and sort of uh, join together nodes if there's following an edge between them to another node etc and they can be a blank zero or one uh, in general the interesting ones are one and one okay um so we have a graph and we have pass through and a simple path is a specific type of path to your graph it's a path which uh, where basically it, it has no repetitions in nodes except possibly, optionally, the start can equal the finish. So I'm going to go through a few examples of this, and I, I, I want you to tell me uh, if these are valid simple paths within this diagram. Okay. Um, so uh, here, so would A B, C, E be a simple path by this definition. And the answer is yes, it is a simple path. It's a path. And there's no, it has no repetition of nodes at all. So it, it, it is a simple path. Okay. Um, how about about A, B, C, A. Is that a simple path? Yes, it is. It has repetition, but it's starting to extend, which is a lot. Okay. The first one can equal the last. How about A, B, C, A, B? Is that okay? No. And why not? There's a repetition kind of inside of it. That's right. Um, so you can have a repetition, but only if the start equals the finish. That's the only repetition allowed. And so A, B, C, A, B is not allowed because there's repetition of B that's neither the start, well, it's not the start, and yet it's repeated, right? Um, so the idea here is that a simple path is a path that that has no repetition or if it has repetition it's pretty a simple type of repetition where it just completes the circle just comes around okay um how about another one here uh a b c e is that a simple path yeah, no repetition at all, right? Um, I'm gonna throw you a curveball. Uh, how about A, B, E? No, because there's no direct link from B to E. So it's not even a path in this. In order to make it a path, you would need to go through C or F to get to E. 
and so it's not even a path. Okay, so a simple path is a is a path through the diagram that either has no repetition or the repetition occurs only in its where its beginning equals its end. Okay, so it's these kind of cycles. Um, uh, it's it's a cycle or it just has no repetition at all. Now a prime path. So those are simple paths. <clears throat> There are a subset of all paths, right? So here we have all paths of our house here. Uh, so this is all paths. It's kind of the outer element of this uh, diagram. Simple paths are subset of those, and prime paths are a subset of simple paths. Uh, what's a What's a prime path? A, a, a simple path is a prime path. One of these falls in this category, prime paths. If it's not contained as a subpath of any other simple path. So what that's saying is prime paths are kind of the simple paths that aren't, aren't just located within a simple path. It's kind of a maximum length simple path that, that so a maximum life path that doesn't have repetition nodes. So if a simple path is fit within another simple path, it won't be a prime path. These are kind of the big simple paths. The biggest simple paths, right? They, they're not inside any other. Um, and uh, you know, it, by definition of any simple path, it doesn't have repetition except the start. So prime paths are kind of these, these big simple paths that have this nice property that are not a, a sub-piece of, of, of any other, um, of any other simple path. Okay, that's what a prime path is. Um, and we're going to look at some examples of this right now. From this great book on testing by Amon and Offa. Okay, so here's um, uh, here's uh, two graphs, and I'd like you to come up with the prime paths here. Um, so this one has n zero, n one, n two, n three. This is on the left. Let's consider that one first. N zero, n one, n two, n three. Can anyone tell me what would be prime paths of this? Well, let's let's come up first with simple paths. What are what are possible simple paths of this? Anyone want to just come out with some simple paths? Some ideas for simple paths for this one on the left. Uh, yes, Sid. Uh, and your, and your... Yeah, and zero and one and three. That's exactly right. Simple path. It happens to be nice because it goes from the start to the finish. It actually doesn't have to, I just want to emphasize, but it's it's kind of a nice one and, and it's kind of hard not to go from the start to the finish. Truth is on this one, right? Okay, what's another one? There'll be a simple path there. It's, it's exactly right. It is the next one. Yes, well, so why are these three? Uh, and one and three is a simple path. That's right. Excellent. How about another one? What's another simple path? Yes, Sid. And zero and two. Yeah, and zero and two. Yeah, oh, good, good. And there's some particularly sort of trivial simple paths, right? Uh, yes, well. Uh, single yeah, it's, just, it's, a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, Funny term we use in mathematics, yeah. um, but it's called a, a degenerate path. Um, you know, not to say it's kind of uh, you know a delinquent path or a, a sort of debaucherous path or something like that. It's a, but it's it's degenerate in the sense it's like an extremely sort of um, uh, it's degraded. It's just a simple path. I don't, I don't know why, why we call it C general, uh, but um, it's kind of a nice word. I got it. Got it. Um, uh, so, so 
So now let's come back to my first question. What are the prime paths of this? So uh, some great examples came out here. Let me throw some of them back to you and ask, is there a prime path? Is N1 and 3 a prime path? Okay, that's right. It's, it's a great simple path, which is what I had asked for, but it's not a prime path. Why is it a prime path? Yes, Lee. Yeah, exactly. And zero and one and three is a perfectly good simple path. And 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 one and three is a subpiece of it. And remember, the idea of prime paths is they're the kind of biggest simple path, the one that's not a piece of another. It's not a just a subpath of another. And so, and one and three is a great simple path. Um, but it's not a prime path. Right. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, I think we can you know, build on that. How about n zero and two? Is that a prime path? No, because it's a it's a sub path of another simple path. What simple path? Of what simple path is it a subset? Yeah, n zero and two and three. So I think you're getting some of the flavor of this. Now let's go on to the one on the right. Okay, now this one is more texture. Can anyone come up for me with some simple paths here for this one? So we, for those who can't read it, I wish I could kind of like drag this around here. You know, you could get it closer, but I probably get in all sorts of trouble and I probably yank it out of the wall and bad things would happen and I might be crushed. Um, I think that's one of the bad things that will happen. You may disagree. Um, okay, <laughs> zero and one here is, is kind of this, this node down here and, and three and four, and this is N2 down here. Can anyone tell me what are some simple paths here? Yes, uh, Stephanie. N0, N1, N2, N4. N0, N1, N2? Oh, no. like oh N3, 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 N4. It's kind of a weird number. I, I would have I labeled this N2 and then N3. But, uh, or, sorry, uh, uh, mumble. No, N2. anyway, I would have done it. N2, N3, and N4. But uh, they didn't ask me. Um, it's a good book. I recommend it. Um, and I have sympathy for book writers. Um, okay, so N0, N1, N3, N4, right? Good. So that is a simple path. If it were N0, N1, N3, N4, N1, would that be a simple path? No, because it's, it's not even a simple path uh, at all, right? Because it, it violates its property that it's only repetition to be at its start and finish being the same. Um, so, Shant, uh, so Shantino is exactly right. And zero and one and three and four is a valid simple path. Give me another simple path for this. Um, yes, Sid. Uh, and three and four and one and two. And three and four and one and two. Yep, great. That's a simple path. Um, by the way, it could have been and one and three and four and one is is uh, that's a simple path too. Yep, two simple path. Um, and one and three and four and one and three is that a simple path? No, because it has repetition that's not just the start and finish being the same, right? Um, Okay, uh, so we're getting a feel for what some simple paths might be for this. They don't have to start at the start of this, and they don't have to end at the end, despite what Lewis Carroll said. Um, so, so anyone want to suggest some prime paths here? Prime paths that might might be associated with this work. Yes, Sid. Uh, and your and zero and one and and two is a prime path. That's right. Let's think about that a little bit. So be a prime path, it has to be a simple path. Is it a simple path? Yeah, it's a simple path. 
and it can't be a subset of any other path and it's it's really hard to think how it could possibly be a subset because the only other paths that it that are possible are ones that kind of come down here and then sort of veer off here and they can't come back to this so the only yeah they, they can't come back to this without the starting and ending at n1 so they can't continue on so that was a very clever one uh, uh, two thumbs up for that um so so great how about another prime path here simple path that's kind of as large as large as it can be anyone yes Paul. And one and then sorry, and one and three and four and and one. Yeah. So so we can't have something that starts before that, or else we get in trouble with the definition of simple paths, right? We can't have something that goes beyond that because we'd be a problem with the definition of a simple path, because now the start is and finish being the same are not the only sort of uh, in other words we can only have repetition and have to start and finish yeah so so that's uh good i, I thought i saw shantanu and then i'll be right back to you bro yeah uh -huh. so two prime paths can we have the same node they can include the same node so those are two prime paths so like by no name say like the edge that you would actually uh yeah, they could have they could have an overlapping edge. Um, um, yes, uh, um, that's an interesting question. I'm not 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 sure I can tell you if I could prove that yes, it is possible. My, I'm actually a little bit torn about what the proper answer to that is. I'm tempted to say no, but I'm, I, I'm having trouble formulating the proof right now. So, so it's a really interesting question. I'd like to find that out. But I think I think the answer is yes. They could actually have it, but in any case, um, these are two orthogonal ones, right? This is kind of a right angles to that, so to speak. But but you were going to say something else, John. Yeah, so so you know, they can have yes. I I I I've shown in my head some examples with this, which have overlapping. So among the different possible prime paths, there are some that have common edges. Yeah. So if you consider path n zero, n one, and n two, that's one prime path. That's one prime path. And then we consider n two, n four, n one. And N2. So both of them are having like N1 and N2 as common. That's correct. And that's okay. Yeah. That is that is okay. And uh that's so you said uh N1 and three. No, no, I'm sorry. And three and four and one and two. That's exactly right. And uh that that's right, yes. So Bo, were you gonna say one? Same, same idea there. Yeah, so so that's correct. Yeah, that, that's right. There actually are some other ones just building on the two that were suggested. So Shantanu's, which had N1, N3, N4, N1. There's others that are kind of have that flavor too. That you might just say, well, they're they're kind of just reshuffling seven. Anyone? Yes, Sid. That's exactly right. That's also a valid prime path, right? Um, nothing else could contain it because um, the start equals to finish, and we can't have something come later than that, and we can't have something come earlier than that um, and still contain all of it. So it's got to be in a general and four and one and three and four is another one, right? Um, so these are all prime paths. Um, so that's good. In fact, we've enumerated various prime paths here. So for this one, the left and zero and one and three on the prime paths. Uh, to get, uh, sorry, that's one of them, and then and zero and two and three. These two right there. You know, easy peasy. 
the ones on the right, exactly the one that was suggested at zero and one and two, I think that was the sit path. And then there's also these kind of uh, flavor ones and one and three and four and one, that's this guy and three and four and one and three. And then, and, and so they're starting finish at M3 and four start and finish. And then finally, the one that was suggested and three and four and one and two. Bingo. Yeah, I should have done this as a pop quiz. Um, folks, we were doing great. Um, uh, for participation marks, you're doing great. Um, so that's awesome. So those are prime paths. Now, here's the thing. You don't want to lose track of where we are. <clears throat> Remember, we're still at the first step of this algorithm. We're still going through or identifying the things we need to cover. These are the things we will need to cover with our paths from start to finish, are these prime paths. The thing that's kind of weird about this, the paths, yeah. Well, we're trying to cover them. We're trying to ensure that our paths from start to finish cover these prime paths. These prime paths don't have to be from start to finish. We're just trying to hit them along the way as we go from start to finish. Because these are kind of nice building blocks out of which we can propose other paths, these kind of maximum like uh, like building blocks. And as we'll see, we'll come up with some test sets from start to finish that will contain these, but we'll get to that. So we went through a little exercise through this. There's actually, probably does not surprise you, the computer scientists, uh, that there's an algorithm for this to build up to enumerate prime paths. And it's a rather pleasing algorithm but one that ran afoul of behavior, software behavior most foul. Okay, um, I'm punning as is uh, my as I am want. Um, so unfortunately, it messed up my special characters here. I had union characters, and I had to replace it with you in the most unceremonious way. So don't get confused by these mutes. Those are actually unions, set unions. Somehow. The fact that I touched up this slide made uh, Office 365 version of PowerPoint freak out and declare all my all my special characters invalid, turn them into weird looking squares um, in a most unseemly fashion. Uh, so anyway, don't be confused by the use. The use are unions, and when you see two U's, know it's a union. Okay. So the basic idea is it's an iterative algorithm. Um, we're going to start with paths of length one. Let's do the nodes. The nodes. Okay. Um, and and then uh, starting with i equals one, we're uh, we're going to build up things. Of successive lengths. So we're starting with length one, we're going to build things of length two, length three, etc. That's what the i is going to do. So we have this big loop, and there's an incremental i right here. For those who don't remember your C and Java syntax, this means add one to i. And, um, okay, so the idea is look, um, we're going to have these set of paths at a certain length. And uh, we're going to essentially take, consider now, uh, as long as we have this set of length i, we're going to try to build a set of length i plus one of things that can be extended. Okay, the set of non simple paths of length i plus one. We can look at the comments here. Okay, now, in order to do this, we need to let R be the set of paths in PI that are cycles uh, or, or that cannot be extended because they end at terminal nodes. So remember, um, when we have, a, we have a path of length I, uh, 
we're going to be looking for things that that are cycles because if it's a cycle, it won't be a simple path if we add another thing to its end. And R is going to identify those things. R is going to is basically going to be a set of simple paths. Okay, um, if it's a cycle. Um, or if it can't be extended because it ends at terminal nodes, well, that's a good candidate for being a simple path because it can't be a subset of another path at its end, right? Like it, it can't be extended at its end because it's the terminal node. So R is kind of a set of things that cannot be extended, okay? Um, and the idea here is that we're going to take prime paths and, and this operation, I said union equals, in the same sense you do times equals or plus equals in a language like C or Java, right? It means P equals the union of, sorry, PP equals the union of PP and R here, okay? So the idea is that PP takes everything in R and incorporates it in it. Um, takes the union with everything that's an R, all these things that can't be extended because they're cycles starting for the start and finish are the same, or because they end at terminal nodes. Uh, and then we take those things that can't be extended into PP and we take them out of what's called the extensible paths. So we kind of winnow them out, we filter them out of the, of the paths of length I to consider our extensible paths. By definition, the ones in R cannot be extended and remain a simple path because they're a cycle whose start and finish are the same. If we extend it, it won't be a simple path anymore. Or because it ends in a terminal node, there's no way we could extend it, right? So R is the things we can't extend. We accumulate them in PP. And those that we can't extend, we remove from this, this list of the extensible paths, okay? And the extensible paths are the ones we're going to go through and extend. Not surprising. And how do we extend them? Well, for each path in the extensible paths, we're going to basically append a node onto it for each possible thing it can get to. The final element of it can get to each of those we're going to append on an extra node. And so we'll have for each element of the extensible paths, each path within it, it might be able to go in two different directions, this way or that way, uh, each two different nodes, and there'll be versions of it for each of those nodes with each of those nodes added in that is going to be included in our, in this set, the set of paths we're considering of length uh, I plus one. Okay. So those will be sort of what we consider in the next iteration of this. So basically, we're setting ourselves up to consider paths of a certain length, P sub I. We start with things of length one, and each round through, we've prepared the set to consider the next round. But we're winnowing out, we're separating out, we're removing out those things that can't be extended or putting them into PP instead. So at the end of this whole thing, you know, we've, we've winnowed out and eventually we're not going to be able to extend anything because we've reached the end node or we've reached cycles. And there's going to be nothing left and it'll be complicated. And it's actually possible to prove that it completes as, as long as, you know, it's a finite length, length graph. Um, now, to find the prime paths, then we have this thing PP, which are basically simple paths, and we discard from all of them things that are subsets of other ones. It's a little bit glib to say, but basically, we look for anything in PP that's a subset of something else, and we discard it. And so we've gone down from simple paths here to prime paths. That's what we want to do. Um, this selects prime paths out from the set of simple paths. So here we're kind of determining the good candidates for um, for for prime paths. 
in the form of simple cuts. These are things that are cycles where the start is equals to finish. Therefore, we want to be able to extend them. Those are accumulated in PP, and so are the ones that end the terminal post. Again, we can't extend them. You know, and those are accumulated in PP, and then we, we get rid of those things in PP that are some sets of others, and we get our problems. Okay, so let's run that down. So let's go through it with an example. Okay, um, here we go. Here's a rather fearsome looking graph. We have a start node with an arrow into it, and we have a finish node shown in this kind of heavy, heavy uh, outline. Okay, um, so each successive iteration of that algorithm considered, oh, sorry, has a blank here, has a blank one, for example. Okay, um, my machine is rashing something fierce. Um, pardon me, I, I'm just going to need to uh, uh, to go close something. I don't think you need to to see that ICU hospital admissions. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, that, was, that was this morning at eight thirty. Um, okay. Um, here we go. We're going to consider things at each step of this algorithm uh, of different lengths. Okay, like one, like two, like three. Remember, that's what each loop is. Remember that? So that's going to be shown. So these are length one things. And length one things are initialized at the very start of this algorithm to be all paths of length one. And guess what? What are all paths of length one here? How would I identify all paths of length one? Anyone? Larissa? The notes. Yeah, it's just the notes themselves. And zero and one and two and three and four and five and six, right? Ah, uh, that's exactly it. And so those those are what those are. And you'll notice I've I've done something a little bit curious here in these columns. Uh, they're listed out um, like one, two, three, and five, but. Um, I've, I've highlighted some in certain colors, okay? Um, and the colors of my screen are a green, which is somehow mangled on this big screen. Although I guess from a distance, it kind of looks greenish um, if you squint, right? Um, okay, so here, length one, I've highlighted things in green that, that go into this R, Accumulated. This R, remember, is the set of paths that are cycles and or that cannot be extended, that basically cannot be extended. And why can't they be extended to remain a single path? Because they're either a cycle or the starting point to finish. Or they end in a terminal node. Either way, we can't extend. <laughs> right? So, so that's what I've highlighted in green. Now, I further distinguished for them why they can't be extended. Exclamation point indicates it's a terminal node. And six is a terminal node. That's why it can't be extended. If it has a star next to it, it's because it would contain an illegal cycle. It, you can't extend it because the start and finish are equal and we're not allowed to just tag something in the end. So that'll be a star. So if you see something that's green, it should have an indication about why it can't be extended, just for your understanding and tracing this through. Okay, so these are our seeds at length one. That's what's initialized up here. And then we're going to go consider length, length two, okay? So each of these, where does length two come from? Length two, whoa, sorry, is produced here. And so this is what's producing length two. We're dealing with length one, i equals one. And now this is where we're producing length two, kind of seeding length two. And how do we do that? Well, for each path that's in this extensible path set, what is that? Well, that's all that we're in P sub i, except for things that could not be extended. So basically, it's everything except for this guy here, everything except for the green. This one couldn't be extended. There's no way we could turn it into something of length two. So we have covered that. 
Okay. Um, and and all these others, by definition, can be extended. They weren't in this. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't in R. Okay. Um, R is the thing that can't be extended. So things that can be extended are in this extensible paths. Um, and that's uh, these one through five. And for each of them, we add in for each thing it can get to the thing. So N0 can get to where? Anyone? Whither can N0 go? It can go to N1. So we have an N0 on one. That's zero one. Where else could it go? Whither could it go? Beyond the, uh, Sorry? N4. So zero four. One, where could one go? Whither could it go? Whither could this arrow fly? And two, yeah, one, two. Where else? And five. That's exactly it. Yeah. Um, and you see where this is coming from, right? Each of these is created by this kind of logic here. We're depending on each possible thing it can get to. That's that's what what it's going through, right? This R got rid of this one uh, from because it's not extensible. And the extensible, the extensible ones, we append to them all possibilities that they can get to. Okay? Pretty easy. And we get to this next one. Now, this one is more textured. Ladies and gentlemen, the plot thickens. Right? Um, so we have these of like two now, and we have, I've shown in green, three that cannot be extended. Why is that? Why can't they be extended? Why can't four, four be extended? Anyone? Larissa? It would be an illegal cycle. We can only have legal cycles if you have a simple path if what happens, if what obtains, if what is the case. Yeah, yeah. So only start the only possible repetition could be starting or finish. Um, only repetition at the very start and finish being the same. And four four is legal, but we can't extend it and have it be legal because then there'd be a, a loop internally, and that's that's ruled out. So four four uh, cannot be extended, and therefore it ends up down here. In fact, six ended up down here, but mumble. Uh, some of you must have. Um, uh, how about four six? Why can't that be extended? Four six. Six. Yeah, six is the end one. Can't be extended. So uh, it's actually going to. Oh, I know why it's not in here. So this is actually not PP. This is prompt has it came from PP after the, the output from this last step. Um, PP is not actually shown here, but it includes six, it includes four, four, it includes four, six, it includes four, five, six. It's kind of accumulating the set of all possible candidates that could be prime paths. And we're going to go through that final step at the end to, oops, so sorry, sort them out. Okay. Um, length three. Um, okay, so for each of these, Zero, one, what, how can that be extended? It can be extended to what? And two or and five, right? So zero, one, two, zero, one, five. I think you get the picture, right? It can be extended for each of these. But here too, we have some that can't be extended. Zero, four, six can't be extended because of what? See, I know. Uh, 156 can't be extended because it's the unknown, right? Um, interestingly, none of these others are, are cycles because we don't have cycles of, of that, that, that broader size here. Um, uh, okay, so um, yeah, that's, that's interesting actually. Um, so uh, one, two, three, for example, uh, is a cycle, but we don't have, we don't yet. Uh, we're not yet at the end of it. Okay, so then we go and extend them, and we could have another column which you can fill in, 
and we extend that and finally we get to length five and length five can't be extended uh, beyond that. It's, it's actually two, three, one, five, six, for example. And, uh, and that's in fact, the longest path through this thing uh, that would be a simple path, right? You could say, well, wait a minute, why not n zero and one and two and three and one and five and six? Why is that a valid simple path? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Lee? Um, because n one repeats. Yeah, and one repeats internal, which is, I think, what we're saying too. So it repeats internal. So that can't be over, over there. It wouldn't be there. These are only simple paths. Only the simple paths that are, or yeah, simple paths that are common. They're not prime paths necessarily, but simple. So then we accumulated all these things in green, and uh, there are some that were in column four, like 0, 1, 2, 3, and 0, 1, 5, 6, and so on. And then we basically remove those that are subsets of others. Uh, and we arrive at a prime path. These are the things we want to cover. Okay, so a lot more work than identifying the nodes. So we're going to identify in the transition. We just look, sort of look at it to see what, where they are. This is more work, but we found the things we want to cover. Now we have to find abstract scenarios from start to finish. Things going from start to finish that will cover them, that will include all of those. Okay, um, so. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to need to identify paths here from start to finish, like zero, uh, they'll have to start at zero, and they'll have to end here at N2, right? That will cover all of these. Could anyone give me, so these are the prime paths here on the right. Can anyone give me a path from N0 through N2, one or more paths that will cover all of these. It could be one or more such paths from start to finish. What's a path? What are a set of paths from start to finish that will cover all of this? Please. You have to make sure you um, in each node and 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 so you can like zero, one, uh, three, four, one, two. That's right. That's right. And and that would in fact uh cover cover all of it. Sid, you were going to yeah. So something like that that would go through all of these. If you could get it to do so, if you could kind of come up with the uh, inputs that would cause it to go all the way through that, yeah, it, it would it would achieve that. That's exactly right. Um and you know, another possibility is you could have one that does this straight through. And another one that goes and zero and one and three and four and one and three and four and one and two. You might say, well, wait a minute, it has repetition in that. That's kind of a certain finish. Well, that's not the point. It's we're not at this stage of our work. Oops, we're not trying to deal with prime paths anymore. We're not dealing with simple paths. We're just trying to find paths from start to finish. They could have any number of repetitions. We want to cover these guys that we identified as prime paths, but we're not constrained to have you know no repetitions except the start and finish at this stage. Okay, that's that's an important part of this. Uh, students can get confused about those things. And on the left hand side, similarly, you know, uh, you could have one test case or one test scenario, abstract scenario being n one and zero and one and three. Another one being N0 and 2 and 3. And um, in the set of all of all test paths that would satisfy the coverage requirements with respect to prime paths are both those. Those would both cover all the prime paths, right? And I think you could go from this and find things that would cover all these prime paths right here. What would be, what would be a path through the system that would cover all prime paths? Least the Lee Sid algorithm won't 
won't work this time because you actually have to go one way or the other. You can't go both ways. So can you give me a, a, a then a set of paths from start to finish that will cover these? Uh, uh, so Larissa first, and then I'll do something. Yes. And zero and one and two and three and one and five and eight. Good answer. Excellent. Yeah. That's that's right. So that would be one. It's not going to cover all of these, but it will cover a very large number of them, most of them. And what's a missing one, Captain? Uh, and you don't employ. Yeah, exactly. Between the two, the Shantanu Larissa power team, we we cover all those front paths. All right. Those are two abstract paths through the system that we cover. Okay, now. Oh boy, now it's time for the testers to get to work because, because then you've got to come up with, with particular concrete test cases that are going to achieve. This, right? My machine is, is going nuts. Um, okay, so then we have to come up with concrete test cases. And those are going to require us to sort of figure out the details here, right? Because we don't know, like at this level of description, this level of abstraction, we don't know like on what criteria does it go left versus right, right? Like if it's if the string is of zero length, then it goes this way. If the string is greater than zero, we go that way and we loop through the string or something. Um, we'd have to look at the details of it, right? And then we have to figure out if those are the two paths we would exercise the Shantanu Larissa um, duo of test cases or test scenarios, we have to find some sort of test cases, things you type in or things you give as inputs, specific inputs, very particular values that we feed in that would make it go this way or make it go that way, right? And uh, you would try to find those, and that would be your test set. That would be your set that sort of gets it to achieve prime path coverage. Okay. So, just as a reminder here, um, uh, right. So we're we're covering these, and uh, and these are uh, some examples. By the way. Those are not particularly privileged, right? The Shantanu uh, and Larissa ones are plain and kind of minimal, but it's it's not not a given that we always want the minimal set. After all, the minimal set might not show some problems that are there. And so, like, I, I mean, it's good for simplicity. We're doing a minimum number of tests. Maybe if we have limited time with testers, we can put together the test. And at least we've achieved that level of thoroughness, right? Which is great. But bear in mind that you know there could be other problems shown if you were to have a few more test cases. It, it may not hurt, but you've already achieved a very strong thing in your testing. You've gone through all these prime paths that you've covered, and that's that's a strong guarantee. So, you know, we could have another set being, for example, 0, 1, 5, 6, another one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 5, 6, and 0, 4, 6. So that could be a set. Um, you know, um, uh, if you would ask how much more will this help, I think you know a little bit more about the algorithm. But just having those two, the power duo, here, the Chantanu uh, Larissa uh, axis, that's uh, that's a very strong uh, achievement to achieve prime paths. And prime paths, I would remind you, are quite far up there in our subsumption hierarchy. It's a strong level of testing. If you folks were to give me prime paths, are you, you know, you tested through the screens of your system by identifying prime paths or through a core algorithm? I would be one, one, one at the camp. Um, I won't be crying if I don't have it, but I'd be a happy camper if you do that. And I'd give you, you know, extra, extra lunch. Um, so just think about this as part of uh, 
what you can do because it is it is the strong level of testing that shows a commitment to test. So bear in mind. So that's prime patterns. Okay, I've kept you too late. Hopefully that's useful and uh, hoping the online experience wasn't too impaired by the thrash of that thrash of that we encountered. Thank you very much, folks. Take care of that.